O Miniver writes in and asks me, why do I uh and um a lot in these videos that I make? It's kind of distracting, Dan. Well, I apologize, and I agree. Um, I'm, I'm not a professional in that sense that uh, I have a great uh, speaking voice or I have uh, a lot of polish. Oddly enough, even though I agree with you that uh, I wish that I didn't uh and um a lot, I've gotten over the years, uh, especially the last year or so that I've been doing these uh, videos, uh, the Ask Dan Schneiders, the Dan Schneider Files, and also obviously the Dan Schneider video interviews, people have said that it makes me a lot more relatable. That if you read uh, the many essays I've written, or any of the poems or the fiction that I've written, um, the umming, and that's just my cat Kiwi sneezing again as she sits on my lap as I'm doing these videos, these latest videos, said that it makes me a lot more relatable, that I'm not just some zombie, some robot that's just, you know, out to destroy the culture killers. And in a certain degree, I understand that. Um, I'm not someone... Well, I'll give you an example. There's uh, Tavis Smiley, is his name. He also uhs and ums a lot. And as I've been doing this, I've listened and find that a lot of people do it. A lot of the uh, national public radio people do that to quite a degree. Not the, to the degree that I do. I'm just recording these alone with my computer at home. But nonetheless, a lot of people have found that it makes me seem more human. They can relate to me. A lot of people say they like my voice and they like my New York accent, which is odd because uh, that's something that I've not encountered uh, most of the time in my life. A lot of people find it very distracting. But uh, as I said, I wish I didn't do it. I think the reason that I do do it is something I've read is that as you're constantly bombarded with information, you need that to fill in the pauses to process it process the information. For example, uh, if you look at a movie like The Terminator and you see The Terminator uh, looking at things, at least in the first two movies, I don't know about some of the later films, but you see him looking at things and you see the little things, you know, no threat and then, you know, the flashing words, you know, no threat, no threat, 160 pound male, whatever. That's sort of the way I process information, but except I'll have a dozen streams of information coming in at once. And let's say I'm interviewing someone and I ask them a, a fairly straightforward question. What often happens is they will not answer the question that I ask. And what happens is it gets sort of screwed up. There's my cat Kiwi sneezing again. Poor girl. She's got, a, she's got some sniffles over the last month or so. But anyway, um, they ask these questions and instead of uh, instead of answering them directly, uh, they they sometimes shift things about. So I have to sort of process the stuff that they're bringing in, which is a good thing, and it, it makes the interviews better overall. But in that moment, I'll be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, and I'm going, you know, what do I need to ask? So that's basically, I think, the reason I and a lot of people do that. I wish that I, in a sense, there's more polish, but in a certain sense, it it works, it would work against me, just like people have complained Usually these techno nerds complain about Cosmoetica, that it's a, not a fancy website. And that's true. It's a, a substance over style website. Yet, I've gotten great praise from uh, several organizations for blind people who come across it because it's very easy to read my essays. When you click on an essay to read it, it's not in a blogger format where there's commercials and advertisements on the left and the right side and just some thin text in the middle. Content and great content is the only thing that the site provides. So, you know, it, Cosmoetica is not a site that's, you know, going to win any technical awards, but people will still be reading it long after these fancy looking blogs have vanished and become ghost blogs. In the same way, my uhing and umming will probably have people liking and listening to my stuff along with the quality of the questions and the people and the subjects that I do in these interviews long after a lot of these podcasts and NPR have gone to the dustbin of history, as the people say. So thanks for the question.